Hi, welcome back. Recently I've been working again with Power BI and SharePoint lists and I've stumbled upon one or two issues when working with uh, columns like uh, multi-select or um, people picker when you can select multiple people. And yeah, I was looking for solutions. I found one or two and I want to share it with you so that you can continue working with such columns and building your reports. If you like the video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. So as you can see here, I have uh, one of my older, older uh, SharePoint lists called master lists. I have here uh, two rows. I'm writing about cars and some metadata. And I have here two special columns. This one is um, people picker column, as you can see, and I am allowing multiple selections. And then next week I have another column called accessories equipment, where I have a multi-select choice uh, column as well. So let's take a look how we can handle these columns in Power BI. I'm going to copy the root URL of this SharePoint site and I'm going to launch Power BI. Two hours later. Okay, Power BI is now running and I'm going to select get data, select more. And then we can select the online services tab and the first one SharePoint online list. Click connect. And now it requires us to provide the site URL. I'm going to paste that in there, select okay. After the connection has been established, we are going to be provided with a list of SharePoint lists, which are in my uh, SharePoint site. And that's the list that we are looking for, the master list. And I'm going to select transform data. This will now launch Power Query and we can continue editing the table. Okay, so as you can see here, we have my master list table, which is the SharePoint list. And at the bottom left corner, uh, I don't know if you can see it now with my webcam, um, let's, let me move it a little bit around. Uh, we have here 40 columns and two rows. We don't need that many, so I'm going to remove now some of them. And to do so in a fast way, I'm going to select choose columns. So this will show me now in a filter format all the columns that I have in my table. I'm going to deselect all and I'm going to keep the ID, the title, since in my case title is the car model, I've just renamed it. And then the rest of the columns, uh, color, engine, built year, car type. And then I also have the accessories equipment and the owner's column. Select OK, this will now eliminate all the rest and keep on these ones. And we can see here already that we have the accessories equipment column, which was my um, multi-choice um, column, and the owners, which is a multi-people select um, column in SharePoint, and that is throwing an error. Before we continue working uh, with this column, let's take a look how we can work with multi-select um, choice columns in SharePoint from SharePoint in Power BI. We have here this expand button. If we click on that, we have two options. First is to extract the values, and second is to expand to new rows. If you want to keep the distinct values of your table, expanding to new rows will be the wrong way to go because this will then create duplicates to each row no, for, for each item that has been selected for that, for that particular row. So we can test it out now. I will select expand to new rows. And we will see that we have now four copies of the BMW um, car model and five for the Mercedes, because I have four selections here for accessories for that car and five for the Mercedes. So this will now break our distinct values and we cannot use this table anymore for a one-to-many relationship because it doesn't uh, have distinct values. And um, yeah, if you're gonna use this uh, expand option, I will suggest you to create a new table and move this column to another table you know, so that they, you can keep the distinct values in the master list column, um, table, sorry, and then create a one-to-many relationship. We can do that later on. For now, I'll delete this step so that we can go back to the um, yeah, status before, and I will try out the extract values. So now it is requiring a, a delimiter so that it can concatenate uh, or you can split the values which are in a list and put them into next to each other. Uh, you can select here one of the um, standard delimiters like a semicolon or you can even use a custom one. 
I'm going to select a semicolon since that's uh, most uh, convenient for me and I'm selecting OK and in a second we will see that the values now are next to each other separated by, the, by a semicolon. This will keep the distinct values for your table but it is up to you then to find a way how to display this data in a yeah, nice way later on in your report. My way to go would be to separate these two tables and um, to make two tables and to bring this column with an ID on another one so I think then it can have multiple rows. But we can see that later on. So for now I'm going to delete this step again and let's take a look at the owners table. So the owners uh, column, sorry, it's, it says it's a table or it's a, it's a table inside a row. Uh, it's throwing out errors. If I expand this, it will say that you cannot find any columns. Uh, based on my research, I found that Power BI with the new API connector to SharePoint, it cannot query this type of column or it's having issues somehow. I was not very successful in my research. Um, but what I found out is that if we use the old API, we can then over, um, yeah, overcome this issue. So what I did then, or what I found out how to do, is to go to the advanced editor, and we can see here at the source that Power BI is using the API version equal 15. This is the newest version, and this is the reason, or I don't know if that's the reason, but this is uh, the version of the which throws out this error. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the API version 14, select done, and this is going to throw another error now because the way the query now is being done is different from the one it was before. And all these steps that we took here or you know, that we renamed and so on and so forth are not being recognized anymore you know, based on the schema from what comes uh, after the connection you know, from, the, from the source step. So what we need to do is we need to delete all the steps that we've taken, even the navigation one, which was taken automatically, and go back to the source. You know? This is the first connection that Power BI establishes. And we can see here that we have uh, three columns. Content, which is the data inside. You know, it's a table for each row. And the name of that table, which is in our case, our uh, SharePoint list. And the folder path you know, for to Power BI to know where that data is coming from. I am going to filter the name column to my SharePoint list that I want to use. So this will allow me now to have only my SharePoint lists and I will then go on and delete these two columns since I don't need the name or the folder path. The name is already here on the left hand side and this is the content of that table. It looks like we don't have any errors so I'm going to expand this and now we can see the same, um, yeah, the same list of columns we saw when we clicked choose columns. So we are going to go to do exactly the same. I'm going to deselect all, select ID, title, color, engine, build year, car type, and then we have owners and accessories equipment. I'm going to deselect use original column name as prefix because then it will be called content dot color, content dot engine, and so on and so forth. I don't want that. I want to have the original names of the columns, so I'm going to deselect that and click OK. So now, as you can see, we have the uh, columns from the SharePoint list. I'm going to quickly rename this column from title to car model. I think that's how I have it on SharePoint as well. Yep, that's true. And we can see now that our two columns, owners and accessories equipment, are a little bit different. First of all, which is good news, owners doesn't throw any errors anymore. And second, we have now accessories equipment showing us table, not as a list anymore. So now we are not able to expand to rows or, um, well, we could expand to rows, but we're not able to extract the values and separate them by a semicolon anymore. Not at least uh, from, from this button. And um, which is not a big deal because I'm planning to move these two columns uh, outside of this table into new tables anyways. But we can see now that the owner's um, column is working and it is loading the column names and we can see all the information or all the columns from the owner's table uh, available to us. And in my case, I'm going to use a name 
uh, to extract the values for that uh, row. You, you can also use like something different, like first name, last name, and then merge those two columns together, but it's, it's not necessary. So you can directly go and use the name. I'm not going to extract the values yet because I want to separate these columns from this table. And to do so, I'm going to duplicate this table twice. And this one will be my owners table. And the next one will be my accessories table. Okay, so in the master list, I want to format the ID column to be a whole number. And I'm going to remove these two columns since we didn't don't need them here. In the owners table, I'm going to format the ID column as a whole number again. And I'm going to remove all the columns except of owners and um, ID. Select delete. Okay, so now I can go on and expand this column and show me the name. Select OK. And now we can see that for the ID 4, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 users. For the ID 5, I have 3 users. And we can see here for the ID 4, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 users. For the ID 5, I have 3 users. So it looks like it's working. And the same thing I'm going to do for the accessories table. I'm going to format, oops, I'm going to format this column to a whole number and delete everything until the accessories column. And now I'm going to expand this to show me the value. It says value because if you're familiar with Power Apps as well, when you create a table, the a Power Apps uh, engine creates a, a column with the values inside, and the column has been renamed values. Uh, it's similar to here, the column is called value, and if we select OK, we then have all the values from our choice table, no, multi-choice table. Um, I'm going to rename this to accessories and the ID column has been formatted. We are good to go. So I'm going to close and apply. And this will now load that data with those three tables into the model. And we can go on and see if we need to create a relationship or maybe Power BI has already created that for us. It looks like it finished moving on the data and let's take a look at the relationships. Yeah, as you can see, it already created the relationship with the based on automatic recognition. And we have now the master list, which has an one-to-many relationship to the accessories table and a one-to-many to the owners table. This is the preferred way to go. We have a distinct column here, a table here, and here we can have duplicates. So we can have this type of relationship. And if we test it out in uh, with one or two visuals, I will grab a slicer here to have my um, car model. And I will put two little tables here next to it. One will contain from the accessories table, the accessories, and the other one will contain from the owners table the name of the owners. So now if I um, check with my SharePoint list, put them here um, and see BMW, we are going to see BMW was the first one, number four. Number four. We have one, two, three, four users, one, two, three, four, and we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four accessories. Huh? And the same for Mercedes. It uh, looks like it's working. One, two, three users and three, two, five, um, and three, four, five accessories, as you can see here. Yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it, and I hope this helps you um, yeah, find, a, find a workaround on how to handle errors with the owners, especially uh, column. Uh, accessories was more of uh, how to handle that type of column and how to work with it, uh, showing you guys uh, different ways. Again, as I said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.